Good morning. How are you doing today? Uh, Pastor Craig asked if I'd come step in again this morning. Um, kind of let most of you get online because I know we, we we starting right at 10 and some of you are just clicking the button, popping in, saying, oh Lord, it's Shane again. But uh, it's uh, good to be here with you again. Uh, I enjoyed the last two that I've done with you guys and I hope that Craig continues to let me do this more and more, but this is it's fun. It's just, it's just a fun way to start the day. It's encouraging, and uh, it's nice to study the Bible with you guys. And uh, so, as usual, we're going to start out with a couple of jokes. So I, got a, I got one to start out with. Why couldn't the bicycle stand up by itself? Why couldn't the bicycle stand up by itself? Well, it was too tired. Too tired. Pirates get it? Yeah, that's kind of funny. Yeah. All right, I got a pirate joke for you. I know most of you like pirate jokes. You probably get this right about what's a pirate's favorite letter? I'll give you a second thing. Pirate's favorite letter. Most of you are probably thinking R, right? You're thinking the R. But actually, a pirate's favorite letter be the C. It be the C. But P comes in a close second because without the P, he would be irate. He would be irate. I'm here all day. Thank you. I know that's hilarious. You are dying right now where you sit. Uh, we are going to continue talking about Psalms, and we are in Psalms 126. So if you want to go ahead and turn to Psalms 126, we're going to look through all verses 1 through 6. And my title in my Bible says, Zion's Restoration. Some of you may have a joyful return to Zion. But while you're getting there, uh, this psalm is talking it's referring to the time when the captives were freed from Babylon and returned home to Jerusalem. They were in captive for 70 years. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, King Cyrus said, you can go home now. And so they left and went back to Jerusalem. So this, this psalm is talking about that captivity and their return home. That's why the title of Zion's Restoration or Return the joyful return of Zion. But uh, this psalm can also be broken down into two parts. The first part would be verses 1 through 3, which refer to uh, God's miraculous, how we should marvel at what God, marvel, not marvel, marvel at what God has done for us in our past. So verses 1 through 3, talking about how we should marvel about what God has done. Verses 4 through 6 should are, are reminding us to trust God to do it again. So let's look into that, and let's look at what is actually going on. So I'm going to read verses 1 through 3. It says, When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Our mouths were filled with laughter then, our tongues with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord had done great things for us. We were joyful. I like that first verse. It talks about our, um, we were like those who dream. And uh, you heard the saying, pinch me, I'm dream pinch me, am I dreaming? You know, all of a sudden, you got to remember, they were in captivity for 70 years. And then all of a sudden, one day, King Cyrus just says, they can go home. It's like, yeah, pinch me, am I dreaming? Yeah, and so the first parts of this, I told you, were like, we should marvel at what God has done. You know, God has done a lot of things. And a lot of times I find myself saying, you know, thank you, God, for what you did. Thank you, God. And a lot of times it just becomes words coming out of our mouths. And there's a difference in, you know, saying thank you, God, for something and marveling at what he did. If I look back on my life, at things in my life and where I should actually be right now, I probably shouldn't even be here. I should be marveled at where God has, what God has brought me from and where he has brought me to. And that's what this verse is trying to say. We were like those who dream. Our mouths were filled with laughter then and our tongues shouts of joy. Their tears were changed to shouts of joy and laughter. And that's how we should be. We should marvel at what God has done for us. The Lord has, it says that, the, then they said, among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. As Christians, we should be the happiest people on earth. 
As Christians, we should be just happy. And then you're just like, well, we can't be happy all the time. Well, think about what God has done for us. We have the knowledge in our Bibles and in our lives of what God has done for us. And it says, then it's, they said among the nations, everyone knows this. Everyone, can people look at your life? And see, can nations, can people in your neighborhood, can people in your city look at your life and see that joy that God has given you? God promises us that you will laugh again. If you're going through a hard time, this is a psalm for that. This is a psalm for, uh, it's actually a psalm of trouble. But it's actually a psalm, if you're going through a hard time, this is one you should read because it says, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. He has done great things for me, and we should marvel at what he's done. But you may be going through that time right now. And so this second part of this psalm, verses 4 through 6, start talking about how we should trust God to do it again. And so it says in verse 4, Restore our fortunes, Lord, like water courses in the Negev. Now, the Negev is a desert. It's a dry area. and But every so often... In certain times of the year, it starts pouring rain and the rivers start flowing all of a sudden and flowers and plant life, they just, they start blooming all of a sudden and it's a restoration and he's saying, restore our fortunes, Lord. They're at, he's asking for God to restore the blessings, restore in my life what I have been missing, the joy, restore it back to me. And um, verse 5 says, those who sow in tears will reap with shouts of joy. It's referring to, to this that, you know, in the Negev it happens all of a sudden, but a lot of times things don't happen quite on our timetable. You know, God's timetable is different than ours. But he does promise that our joy, we will be filled with joy again. And verse 6 finally says, though... The one goes along weeping, carrying the bag of seed. He will surely come back with shouts of joy, carrying his, sheep, carrying his sheaves. And this verse reminds us that we uh, need to continue to, doing God, continue to do God's work. We need to continue to commit ourselves to the Lord. So in verse 4, we look at pray for full restoration. Verse 5 Know that God will return our sorrow into joy. And then in verse 6, commit yourself to what the Lord has. You may be going through something today. You may be going through a hard time. As a nation and a world, we're going through corona. And it's almost like being in bondage and exile. I mean, we can't see people like we normally. Things have changed for us. It's not like we normally. There are a lot of people that have cried tears over this. There's a lot of tear going on. There, you may be have some other sorrow in your life. You may be have tears of regret, tears of sorrow because of alcohol in your life, tears of sorrow because of um, drugs. You may have just, just divorce, uh, death in the family. There's many things in your life that could be going on right now that could be a time of trouble in your life. But I want you to understand something. This is a psalm of trouble, but it's also a psalm that gives us hope because we can know that God will turn our sorrow into joy. There's a verse that says, Weeping may endure the night, but joy comes in the morning. So I want you, if you remember anything today, remember to marvel at what God has done for you. Even in your sad time now, marvel at what he did for you in the past and know and trust that God will do it again. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for all that you've done. God, you deserve more than just our thanks. God, we just are marvel at where you've brought us from, what you have brought us from, and where you've brought my life to today. Father, I never dreamed that I'd be sitting here, standing here, telling others about your word, talking about you, but God, you have done this. This is all you. And God, you are just so great. And God, most of all, the greatest thing you did for me was send your son to die for me. 
uh, that is something we should marvel at every minute of the day of what you did for us. You, he took our place on the cross. He took our place in death so that we didn't have to. God, thank you for that. And God, if there's someone in sorrow today, someone that's in need today, someone may be in pain today, God, I just hope that they read these verses in Psalm 126 and trust that you're going to bring them back. You're going to bring joy to their mouth again. God, we thank you for all that you're going to do. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, and I hope you all have a great day, and uh, you'll have a surprise guest again tomorrow at 10, so be back. See you then. Bye-bye.